So we were talking about what was your earliest memory in Scotland, obviously. Um, yes. George and I in a boatyard with our father and surprisingly one of the last conversations I had with George, he remembered it too. <laughs> yeah. And he was wearing his blue velvet suit, which he absolutely hated. It was not him. There is a picture somewhere of that. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. And uh, I think we both were impressed with how high the boats were. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they were all out of the water, up on cradles. Yeah. So this would have been Glasgow then? Uh, could have been Glasgow. Yeah. All big boat yards, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it could have been Glasgow. It could have been, you know, the the Eater Coast. There's not too. How it's not a wide country. I, I was about four. Four. Wow. I was about four, and George was probably just over two. Wow. And he remembered. It. <laughs> it's one of those memories that you have that just. Yeah. Blew your mind. Sticks with you. Yeah. 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 Always has. Yeah. Always has. So how old were you when the war started? About? For us it started in 1938, I was just born. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, that's when uh, Hitler invaded Poland. Oh, yeah. So, and then of course our uncles, <laughs> and I can think Bill he got in early. He cheated. He said he was older because mm -hmm. he was a much taller, broader yeah. Scottish man. Scottish guy. So yeah. that was mom's youngest brother. No, George. George was the youngest. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Margo and Morags and oh. Beth's father. Yeah. Great dancer, though. Was he? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 When we... When we went to Scotland, that uh, when you were nine, yeah, we missed the train to Edinburgh because Jean and I had gotten on the wrong train from Auntie Meg's, yeah, and uh, <laughs> they had to wait till they sent us back. So we ended up we went to a dance hall, mm -hmm. and Uncle Tom and Uncle George were really really good ballroom dancers. Yeah. Did you dance? Yeah, that and you too. I was. Oh. You were there. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> ditch you. No, <laughs> they, but, left, they left me on the train. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's backtrack a little bit. Okay. Do you remember any of the war years? Uh, a few, mm -hmm. a few. Um, I remember um, for a long time the infant gas mask, which was like a body bag that you stuck the baby into was yeah. in the closet for years, yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, and our and playground was um, bomb shelters. George tried to jump from one to the other, always missed. <laughs> so oh that's why he had the scars on top of his head. <laughs> when, he, when he lost his hair, he had a perfect tic-tac-toe board. <laughs> And uh, somebody, one of the big boys carried him home. The last time, don't hit him, Mrs. Edie, he did it again. <laughs> because he was the youngest, yeah. and he always tried to keep up with everybody else. Yeah, it was George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we did talk uh, about the story with the apples. So oh. To... My one and only. Mm -hmm. Scalp on the backside. Yeah. Yes. Um, during the war, a lot of things were obtained on the black market. So, we all the neighbors are out whitewashing the halls, in you know, in the close, so that nice and clean. And you remember the address? I remember. Two fifty five West Muir Street. Yeah. And we were on the first floor. In Glasgow. In Glasgow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I walked into the hallway with a bag of apples. Daddy went to the black market, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> we have apples. 
Yeah. So, and she paddled my, she scalped my backside all the way up the stairs. <laughs> you won't be kidding me, a redneck. <laughs> but you still had apples. But we still had apples. I remember mom saying that she waited two and a half hours to get a banana so George could try his first banana. Yeah. And he hated it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he was actually born in the... 1940. In the Battle of Britain. During the bat, yep. Yeah. But he was born during the Battle of Britain. Yeah. yeah. June 1940. In a bomb shelter, no? No. no. In the house. No. In, in the house. In the house. But during the bombing. Yeah. Well, isn't that the famous story that poor mom had the baby and daddy and the doctor got uh, drunk? Well, yeah. she might have told you that one. I didn't get that one. <laughs> she did tell me that one. Yeah. <laughs> they were there for trapped like in the house for a couple of days, and then him and my, the doctor and my father just got drunk instead. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and Jennifer was born at home. Yeah. And that was she was born right after the war ended. And uh, <laughs> they sent, yeah, no, 40, 46. Yeah. Uh, George and I were sent to the movies on a Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we came home, there she was, mm -hmm. blonde and curly. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 And I thought she was my special charge. <laughs> oh, your own little doll. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. How old they, were you then? Oh. I, I was you. probably the seven years between. Yeah. I was probably about nine. Yeah. Yeah. So I would get to take her out in the pram. Yeah. yeah. The war but, ended, so it wasn't so bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Listen, even what during was the war. Roscoe like at the end of the war? Were jobs they were. Out or were no, they... no. Uh, the shipyards were. They burned for two weeks, I heard, you know, and we were around the corner from a munitions factory that never got hit because the munitions factories were all over the place in hidden places. They weren't, there wasn't a sign up on top. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, no, they, so they may do where, uh, with, uh, with everything, but Mom made sure that we were, it was kind of normal. I went to school. <laughs> really? <coughs> yeah, and I was admitted before my fifth birthday. But I had to have an interview with the headmistress in a little office with a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> Things you remember, That you remember. Right? <laughs> oh, that. And at that school, the worst. You know, when they made dessert. Oh. It was bread pudding, and it was bloody awful. Oh, really? Oh. They had bread pudding. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just <laughs> about the same. Think of. Yeah. <laughs> so what year did Daddy come over then to the U.S.? He came, I think, the winter of 47, because he was here for that huge snowstorm, because that was one of the first jobs he got was shoveling. Wow. You know, and our father would have, because he sent clothes back, you know, he sent money back to mom. Yeah. yeah. But what did he do over in Scotland? Well, on my birth certificate, it says he's a lorry driver. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, he was, he could do electrical, you know. Yeah. And, uh. He played the violin and the accordion. <laughs> you, he did go to the Toronto Conservatory of Music. Yeah. See, that's a little, you know, um, that's one of the things. So he was born in Scotland and then immigrated to Canada. Canada. Really grew up in Canada. Yes. Right? And then immigrated back to Scotland and moved in next door to our mother. Right. And that's how they met. They were next door neighbors. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So... So when we came, when you came here, right, you know, it, it became really easy to go back to Canada because that was really his, almost his second home. Yeah. More than anything. Yeah. Good. Cause, and he lived in Ontario, Manitoba, uh, British Columbia, Victoria, 
Be Which is how all the Scottish relatives ended up in Canada. Yeah. And, uh, no. His, he's thing. actually got Winnipeg. Our grandfather, James Eady, yeah, had a bro had a brother, Edward. When we were in Winnipeg, when you were just a baby, mm -hmm. we went to visit him. That's the only reason I remember that, because I, I was probably about fourteen when we went to Canada. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's relatives in in Winnipeg. In fact, there's a James E.D. that has comes on the or Jim E.D. Yeah. that comes on the TV every so often as um, the coroner, wasn't it? Or no, what? no, he he was a naturalist. A painter, wasn't he? No, no. No. No, he but so... the painter is actually. Uh, Robertson. Well, no, he's not a Robertson. Yeah, he's he on was mom's anti side. Yeah, he's on right. mom's side. Yeah. But Auntie Betty married oh dear, forgot Swanton. 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 Yeah. And his name is Swanton. Yeah. Right. And you know, some of the story now of course I was born in the US. Okay? Yes. So um but some of the stories that I've heard about Scotland and everything else and you know, the, the times that you guys had over there in Glasgow and, and just coming to America, you know. I, um, I know the time, so Daddy left in 47, so it was just Mom and you and the three kids, really. Mm -hmm. And was she working then, or how did she Oh, yeah, yeah, she worked for uh, Nairns's Oat Cake Baker. Oh, okay. Yeah, she went to work there. Yeah. You know, and just kept everything running. And I used to stand because on the first floor we had a bow window on the in the in the flat. So yeah. I, you know, I was always standing in the window when she walked down the street. Yeah, yeah. But but, but mom grew up with her family, and I yes. guess maybe we should talk about that too. I mean, she was the eldest of seven children. Mm-hmm. And know. she, uh, from the time her mother died, when mom was just fourteen. She was in charge of. She brought. She raised those kids, her and mother. our gra our our grandfather, my grandfather, was kind of strict with the boys, from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Very strict with the boys, and uh, you know, so she raised everybody. And I she used to tell me that your father, God bless him, he used to help me wash down all the kids before we could go out for a walk, you yeah. know. Even Auntie Jean would say that. She said that Daddy would uh, uh, always bring her the sweets. Yeah. You know, he would pick Mom up for a date, but he would bring, she was the youngest. She was probably only two years old, right, in the beginning when, yeah. day, days or three. And, uh, um, you know, he, he would bring a, a sweets for her and, and help her get everybody else all ready. You know, she loved that. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, he, it was, it, he was, they were both so family oriented, you know, yeah. and they, I don't think, I don't think we ever heard mom resent any part of it. No. No. Uh, the only thing she resented is a couple of times they got housekeepers and she said, they're all after my father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah one of them, especially one of them, send yeah. them all off and separate them all. And mom would have none of that, you know, kept them all together. So, you know, was, family was important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then she was able to finally, they got married. Right. In 1936. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On December uh, 19th. Yeah. So, yeah. 19th, 1936. And, um, you know, it was, a, I guess, her first time separated, really, from the, raising yeah. everybody <laughs> to our own house. And uh, then actually uh, in at the household when they went to live in Glasgow is our grandfather, Archie, mm -hmm. our father, and mom. And she didn't work outside of the home then. She, you know. Taking care of the kids. But she... Uh, no, she was <laughs> taking care of everybody. Yeah, because she, they lived together, but... They also lived with my father's father, so my grandfather, 
uh, yeah. Edie, right? And the grandmother was still alive then. Yeah. His mother was still alive yeah, then. Yeah, she died just, Paul? you know. Was that Paul? Or is no, that no. older? Her, oh, no. This, no, this is on Ba's the Edie's side. Grand, her grandmother? No, no. Ba is her, is our grandmother, your grandmother's stepmother. Yeah. My grandmother's stepmother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because her mother died very early. Yeah, when she was 14. But she lived with her in law. Mom lived with her in laws. And from what they said, she was well, really. A bitch a, on wheels. A bitch on wheels, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, she never drew anything because. Yeah. You know, any time that she went, they went in the bedroom. There's another nail in my coffin. <laughs> I believe there was a baby born before me yeah. that was a boy. Yeah. That only lived a few hours, because if a, the reason George is not James, because he wasn't the first, um, and they would have had him baptized and buried, they would not rename another child. Yeah, I think Jen, um, my Jen, did that. Uh, went back five generations, uh -huh. and the first one, everyone was a, a James, so there probably was a child. We'll yeah. That. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. so I got my paternal grandmother's name. Isabella. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. But she she died fairly early, right? She. I want to say, she either died early in thirty eight, mm. or thirty seven. But before I was born, because I, you know. So did did Daddy's father immigrate with him, or did he immigrate with a you couple guys? Either, yeah, over? no, no, no. Oh, he came over after us. Oh, he did. Oh, oh okay. yeah, oh. yeah. So. So tell me about when um, when you guys were immigrating. So Daddy's over already over there. He's right. in the in New York. And he's sending money back for clothes and whatever else. Well, he, he would buy clothes here in the States, pick and up a, a, a big bag, a big box. Yeah. Jennifer and I got two gorgeous pink dresses. Yeah. Yeah. Remember those dresses? Like, <laughs> yeah. They were, That's great. Yeah. You know. And then there was a special anniversary I heard about. Um, their anniversary and... He said he must have ordered every mom in Glasgow because the bouquet was so huge she filled every vase <laughs> in the house. I can picture her smiling from, oh, from here. Ear to ear. Oh, yeah. Ear to ear. Yeah. So and, then, and she loved those big football mums. I yeah. guess those, that's what it was. Yeah, right? it was the yeah. big mums. Yeah. The Yeah. Special time. So tell me, uh, so now you're you're coming to America. I know that uh, you came over on the Queen Mary, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, tell us about when you left Scotland, well, how you felt. Uh, scared, yeah. nervous. And uh, when we were leaving the station, there was a piper mm -hmm. on, the, on the platform yeah. playing, I'm no a war to bite a war. In other words... I'm not go. I'm not going to be away to stay away. Right. I'll always come back and see you. Yeah. You know. It's so. a fun memory for you, isn't it? <laughs> well, it made me cry. Yes. <laughs> Mom and I <laughs> had. Thinking about it now, it makes you cry. Ma and Mom and I had buckets of tears. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here she is immigrating with three kids. Yeah. Yeah. How did you? Because you, you, how old were you when you immigrated? Eleven. Eleven. How did you feel about going to America? Besides, scared, but you know, scared anticipation because we watched every uh, Bob Hope, every film during the war. A rerun was a re. We didn't care. Yeah. There was no TV or anything, so. Yeah. How long? And Daddy was there. And right. Daddy was there. Yeah. 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 But. What was it like on the Queen Mary? <laughs> It was exciting. Your yeah. Uncle George. Um, well, you guys weren't in first class. No, we were in second, you know. So, yeah. But we had the uh, beautiful dining room and waiters. 
And luckily, our parents had given us a good set of table manners. Mm -hmm. So she felt safe sending me to the dining room with George and Jennifer in tow because she was sick in the cabin. Just ask the waiter for some crackers, yeah. you know, or some biscuits. How long did it take to go come across? Five, five days. Five days. Yeah. And you were sick the whole time? Or no, I wasn't. Was sick the whole time? Yeah, because yeah. she'd had the remainder of her teeth pulled. So she had dentures. Uh, <laughs> she'd tried, and, but she was sick. Yeah. yeah. Truly sick. So, and her, the waiters were lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they used to feed us, have some more fruit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And Jen would go into daycare, right? Jen, we used to dump. They had a nursery, yeah. so, so you dumped her there. We dumped her there, <laughs> and George was turned, thrown out of first class once a day and twice on, you know, whatever. At least twice a day, <laughs> because he would go exploring. Found the indoor swimming pool, yeah, which we were in because it was March, but. You know, I'm sure they were. I don't know how hot the water was, but yeah. he found the big indoor swimming pool. <laughs> he brought me to see that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, got thrown some... out of first class quite a bit, huh? Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. He explored it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they'd bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and George, George was always charming. He wasn't fresh. How old was he then? Nine? Nine. Nine, nine ten. Yeah. So we figured out where your love of cruising came from. Oh, yeah. Started at <laughs> o o 11 on the Queen Anne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That's yeah. good. That's great. So I think arrival was what? March 31st, 1949. Right. New York. Yeah. Our mom got us up yeah, before dawn. Point. Yeah. <laughs> before dawn to get up on deck to see the Statue of Liberty which was lit up, yeah. very impressive, Yeah, very impressive. And they cool. had, uh, <laughs> then I think uh, starting at eight o'clock, we had to get online to come through immigration. Oh, okay. They did it on the ship. Yeah. And uh, here I am with my chest x-ray. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, because I was chronically bronchial. Yeah. Um, so I had to prove that I didn't have tuberculosis. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's what the um, immigration said to do when we were interviewed in, uh, in Glasgow mm -hmm. to come over because of my chronic cough. Yeah. That hasn't changed then. <laughs> well, it did for a lot of years. I got a lot of good years without yeah. the coughing. Yeah. So but, Daddy met you at the ship, I'm assuming? Yes. And Mom had it. Uh, George wasn't in kilts, but he was in, you know, the, the short pants and the boys there. Yeah. Uh, I was in kilt, mm -hmm. you know. George did have a kilt. We had his kilt for years, though. I know. Yeah. But I think he outgrew. Yeah. He, well, maybe he did. Because mm -hmm. Jennifer and I had matching um, Aran Isle sweaters. Yeah. Not Aran Isle. Fair Isle. Fair Isle. Fair Isle. Yeah. Uh, sweaters. Yeah. Uh, that were hand knitted mm -hmm. with all the little figures yeah. going across. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we came <laughs> running down. And I have to tell you, we saw we didn't have to look for our dad. Yeah. <laughs> we knew, you know. Just like a shot. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Yeah. So where did where did you live then? Was it um, Washington for, Heights at that point? Or? No, no. We um, when we first came here, we lived with Uncle George and Auntie Jean. Oh, okay. Until that. found an apartment. Yeah. And the apartment was on 163rd Street and Third Avenue. Mm -hmm. He was. They were supers. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I learned how to pull a dumb waiter. There you go. <laughs> yeah. A skill. <laughs> a skill. Hey. Yeah. But I, I got paid for it. And 
you know, it was um, it was a changing neighborhood. Yeah. So they convinced mom that she really had to take us to better schools because we were ad more advanced, mm -hmm. you know, academically than the schools here. Yeah. Yeah, where we were in the neighborhood. It's like everything else. Depends where you live. Yeah. So we moved up to University Avenue, mm -hmm. still supers, yeah. <laughs> and George and I learned how to stoke a fire for the night, a boiler. So this is a boiler in an apartment building to keep everything running in the apartment yeah. building, right? Yeah. We learned how to, you know, put the boiler to bed for the night, how to open it up, shovel coal. The funniest story about coal was I came home from, I think I was in middle school, and uh, she goes, Boots, our dog, yeah. had puppies on the top of the coal bin. <laughs> so, but she was a black dog with white feet. <laughs> so you have to go up and get them, Isabel. <laughs> so as years now, we've, you've arrived, 1949, you're in a better school, you're in University Avenue. And then all good news comes because you would get a baby sister. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there she is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we were living in University Avenue then? Or we were living in... in University in, Avenue. And she went to a uh, hospital in Manhattan? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it she, was Columbia she, Presbyterian. That's right. <laughs> it was Prenthead Presbyterian in the name. And it was a good hospital. Yeah. Still is. Yeah, one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. So... so and then you, uh, our father goes, hmm, Mom's not back. Yeah, she went for a checkup or something yeah. the day before. Her, I was due on June 1st, and she went on the day before for a checkup. Yeah. I'm and told. there you came. Yeah. And they were, you know. So I, I said, maybe you better call. Those were the days of the rotary phone, the black rotary yeah, phones. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, was working at the time? No, she was a super's wife, but yeah. that's how George, George and I learned how to, because it came a time she couldn't mop the floors, right. carry the buckets up. So George and I did it. Mm -hmm. How many apartments were there? Was it, it was five floors. floors. There's five floors with... So you were busy. <laughs> no yeah, school. We, we did. We did. It was Saturdays. Yeah. We washed the floors. I, it didn't hurt us. Yeah. We we learned how to swing them up. Yeah. And not leave, you know, mm -hmm. and it streaks I and polished bra it. polished brass. Those were the days when a good good building in the Bronx had washed. They were washed every Saturday. The brass was polished every Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of a mixed neighborhood. I know it Mom was, learned uh, how to make some uh, <laughs> lumpkies, I guess. We called them cabbage rolls. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was because one of the other uh, super families is Polish. Yeah. yeah. And uh, primarily, the neighborhood was Jewish. Mm -hmm. I used to say 98% Jewish, 1.5% yeah. Catholic, uh, Catholic, and the rest of us Protestants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But and we had friends of, you know, <coughs> and our mom was still the same person. If it's your friend, bring them home. Yeah. yeah. Always room for one more. You had a house full. <laughs> George always had a group of friends that he yeah, was good yeah. friends with for years and years. And years and yeah. Yep. That was even back then in the fifties, in, oh. in, in the early fifties. Yeah. Yeah. How old was he in the early fifties? How old were you in the early fifties? Okay, I graduated high school in nineteen fifty-six. Okay. I was seventeen. So you were a teenager. And he was yeah. two years younger. And I graduated on a Friday, and because our father had talked to. The manager at one of the Chase branches, mm -hmm. I got an interview just before my senior year to work at Chase Bank two nights a week. So wow. I was, I was, we, 
we work. If nothing else, we work. Mm -hmm. But uh, I worked at Woolworths during, you know, like after school, mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Saturday. Or no, Monday, Wednesday. Tuesday and Friday, I worked at Chase Bank. So I graduated on a Friday and I went to work at Chase on Monday as a stenographer mm -hmm. in the Corporate Securities Department, which is on Exchange Place. That's one, <coughs> one street below Wall Street. Hmm. And uh, you learn, you learn to take to dictation. <laughs> no, you learn to take dictation because they were installing air conditioning. But until then, the windows were open to a narrow canyon street. Mm -hmm. So the noise level oh, uh, was huge. Yeah. Yeah. What was Grandpa doing at this time in New York City? Where, where was? Exterminating. So he was an exterminator. How did he get the job? As an um, our Uncle George got uh, him the job because it was tough get, you know, getting a license as a truck driver, lorry driver, because that was... A lot of those industries were controlled, mm -hmm. suffice it to say, yeah. And uh, so Uncle George was Daddy's stepbrother. His last name was Irwin, George right. Irwin, and he married a wonderful. He was he was not the greatest guys, but he married uh, oh. a, a wonderful woman. Her name was also Jean, also born June first, and um, but she was she was a, a lovely, lovely lady. And, yeah. Uh, and then they had this friend Louise, so we used to go over there on a Sunday. I still remember this when I was very little. We'd go over there and they'd invite us over for Sunday dinner and Daddy would find every possible way to be, you know. We would do it at 1 o'clock, so at 12.55 he would start polishing the car or changing the oil or you name it, you know. But uh, we would go there and, and we'd all spend our time at Uncle George's house. And we were talking about this earlier, that he was very early in, in photography. And he had this Kodak. Remember the Kodak camera oh, he had? Oh, yeah. Um, but it was pretty advanced for the time. And he found slides. So we would sit there for hours upon hours upon hours <coughs> watching slides of Yellowstone National Park and bears and flowers. And oh, oh my yeah, goodness, oh. you can't even imagine how many <laughs> slides. Hey. <laughs> uh, and he was the, uh, you know... I was the oldest, yeah. and I, I couldn't slide out as daintily as this group. Yeah, we learned how to slide under the projector and slide out of the room to try to get out of the room, but yeah, yeah. I'd always get caught anyway, but <laughs> yeah, no, and, and um, he was, um, he, I think he was always kind of jealous of daddy. You know, yeah. It was a yeah. tough relationship. He, and, first, uh, uh, first thing, um, he wanted our parents to send us, George mm -hmm. and myself, over to the U.S., away from the bombing, to live with them. And our mother would have none of that. Yeah. No, we don't separate. In fact, during the worst, you know, the worst of it, when uh, there was bombing, we stayed in our flat, with the windows, you know. Because she hated bomb shelters. Well, they were dirty. There's no, so you got to bring down something to sit on. You know, I only remember them as like, it looked like garbage dumps, you know, after the war. And they were horrible. <coughs> it was a place to go if you're on the street. Mm -hmm. But if you were near your home, well, a lot of people stayed in their flats. And those, those were the days when those flats were heated with coal fires in every room. Mm -hmm. And the older ones even had gas lights on, you know. Well, if you got bombed, you'd be up and you'd be sure. <laughs> Yeah, you, you'd you be a mess. by recovering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a well, they... Time. What did they feel about being in... in New York and New York City. So oh, the, your parents. What did I, I 
extremely proud. Yeah. 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 They loved they love New York. They love New York yeah. City. As we grew up, boy, you know, we would, we always went to Radio City Music Hall mm -hmm. for the Christmas show, for the Easter show, and and I don't know how much it cost. I don't know how they did it, but we always went and stood in line, <laughs> freezing to death, no matter what to see, whatever show it was, we were freezing. But the way the way you stay warm when you go to uh, to go to Radio City is that you run across the street and you warm up at St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> For a bunch of Protestants, we spent a lot of time at St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> if somebody showed me pictures now, I could say, oh, that's St. Patrick's. I know it very well. Yeah. Uh, because, because we warmed up there quite a few times. Yeah. In fact, uh, when Jennifer, uh, we took Megan and her, you know, the kids uh, yeah. into, radio, into Radio City. Yeah. And it was like six degrees. Yeah. And I said, keep walking, St. Patrick's is close. <laughs> The family tradition of how do you stay warm. Tradition, you know, yeah. and they have, you know. Uh, well, Mom loved the city. I, you know, even Christmas, she'd love to see oh, silver bells the, to sing the song. Uh, yeah. Who is the boxer? Jack. Oh, Jack Dempsey's. Though. Jack Dempsey's restaurant. Yeah. There's a picture of Jennifer's graduation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of Mom, <laughs> hat, dress. Yeah. And Where is it? I think um, we have it somewhere. It was in Midtown, yeah. Yeah, Jack Dempsey's. We passed it. The cell assigned that yeah. for Jack Dempsey's. So he was a famous boxer, but he had this like a nightclub, and it was very fancy. They'd have these big banquet seating, so you would all sit around the table, and they always had the photographer. You know, like you see in the movies, right. the photographer comes and takes the picture yeah. of the table. I wasn't there, obviously. I was too young, I guess. To be at that place, but you were probably in school. It was it was her Jennifer's but high I, school graduation. I think it was Dewey High School. I think it was earlier mm -hmm. than that. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, because yeah. I was wearing the dress that I wore her, when I t uh, her, her, her. Oh well, was, maybe it was. It was a junior high school as well. Yeah. 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 And the only way I know it was <laughs> the dress. I had the black and white sheet. Yeah. Yeah, it was much earlier. The Jenny Grace went to high school in '63. And when Jennifer and I were in Puerto Rico, I wanted to put a sign on her back. She's fifteen. <laughs> uh, so the early years. So the places that you guys would go, and I, I only because I'm kind of this lump of a baby that you take taken there. Um, but you know, as much as you love the city and everything else, you would go to. Um, uh, what was the beach? Orchard Beach? Orchard Beach, and Tibbetts Brook. Tibbetts Brook. That was yeah. a famous, because there was nice picnic areas there. Yeah. Is that um, where they had the big bull? That I'm no, I don't of? think so. Oh, okay. That, that was Coney Island. Yeah, okay. That was a buffalo in yeah. Coney Island, yeah. yeah. But I guess the, the thing is, because we didn't have a lot of relatives around right. and everything, we were really the, we kind of depended on each other, and we just a close family, happy to be together. Yeah, happy to be in New York, and uh, you know. And we were all we were always that. Yeah, I don't think we thought about it, you know, that we were close. But we, you know, even if we fought, and God knows Jennifer and I fought over my closet. <laughs> You know, first out, best dressed. Yeah. No, last out, best oh, dressed. No. She'd wait till I went to work. But yeah, my we, waist was always thinner than hers. So I, I you wrinkled the waistband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you wore it. Yeah. But the early years, I mean, we would go um, for vacation. We always had a vacation, no matter what. That's the family trait. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I was, what was I, two and a half maybe, or two years old, when we yeah. traipsed across country in a big old, what was the car, do you remember? Chevy, I think. Yeah. So it was one of those big old 1956 something or other, I guess, wasn't it? Around I'm there? not sure it was a 56. I think it might have been oh, earlier. It must have been earlier, because I was only two, so that would be 1953. Yeah. So it was probably late 40s. It, listen, it had to be because I was 14 or 15. Yeah. Well, you know, I hadn't graduated high school then. So we traveled all the way out to, to see mom's sister, Betty, 
in, out in, in uh, Badger, Badger, Man- Manitoba, Manitoba, right? Which was, it was so far up in the woods. When we got there, uh, our father built the post office because she was the post mistress. <laughs> so he built the post well, office, right? Yep. And George, when we were getting in there, George walked ahead of the car because the ruts were so deep. It was a logging road. Yeah. So he walked ahead. <laughs> One of our family stories, he walked ahead, right? And looking for big ruts that the car wouldn't fall into, I guess, right? And everything, all of a sudden he, st- he said, stop, stop, stop. <coughs> so he stopped the car and they looked at him and he goes, red light. <laughs> yeah, he probably got in trouble for that. <laughs> that was okay. So we got there. Ooh. And... Uh, um, and uh, so they were really in the country, right? She was having her sixth child, the painter that you talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, it was very, in fact, very rural. They, in fact, they were uh, burned out twice, you know, prairie fires. So they are now living there. Jennifer and I got to sleep in the attic. And, you know, in the morning, I looked at her. She looked at me. I said, do I look like you? And she goes, I think so. We had been bitten by bed bugs. Oh, oh it was a fond memory of Ken. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but tell them the good news about where you went to the bathroom. Oh, the outhouse was 50 feet away. Or maybe I felt like a hundred. So Jennifer and I would go out together. Hurry up, <laughs> hurry up! I see eyes <laughs> because they all the dogs out at night. So the eyes. But like the wolves, wolves only came down to the timber line. You know where the timber line was? Right next to the outhouse. <laughs> Not too far from it. <laughs> and blueberries, they had blueberries, oh. everything. Right? And. Yeah. Our Aunt Betty gave us a basket of blueberries to take with us. They hit the road. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Jennifer really ate blueberries the rest of her life. <laughs> uh, maybe in a muffin if she had it, to. It's then. I don't think so. Hated uh, them. But Mom got there, right? You know, and Auntie Betty is pregnant, so she couldn't do too much and everything. And Mom scrubbed down the whole place. I heard about this. Oh, yes. She scrubbed everything. It's kind of like me with my crazy bleach. But I scrubbed everything possible, right? And took all the dirty water and dumped it down the sink, only to discover there was no pipes. (laughs) To the outside. (laughs) So all the dirty water went right over the floor again. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh, All the good stories are. Oh, George and I ran for the hills. (laughs) And we we brought the same dog, Boots. Yeah. Right? So their dog would go up into the, uh, go get its own food, and go catch a squirrel or something. <laughs> so they said, Boots just looked at them like, oh, my, my food comes in cans. <laughs> I don't know about you. You want me to go do what? <laughs> <coughs> All right, so we were talking about going to Canada and everything else. Uh-huh. And the, um, in the, my early years of being, um, oh, not abused, but being the baby, Yes. I do remember that Jennifer told me that when I was born, and she was, what, six? Uh-huh. That I was her own personal Cupid doll. Exactly. <laughs> yes, we, we all adopted one day. <laughs> As, uh, I, when Jennifer was born, I was just afraid that my best girlfriend was going to take charge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in an ambulance with scarlet fever. Right. Yeah. And... Uh, in isolation for a month, yeah. and I thought for sure they'd give away my job. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but I was the only Yankee. Yes. And the family made sure they told me that all the time. In fact, uh, um, well, you did teach me a lot of things because you guys were in school. Uh huh. So before I reached five, I was able to do the um, the Pledge of Allegiance. I was able to. I was very proud of being an American, actually. Um, but one of the things that they did say was that um, I was adopted, I was brought by the Indians, I'm the only <laughs> Yankee, all of these things, right? So and now I'm in kindergarten, and of course I told the teacher all about, you know, I only live with these foreigners, they all have funny accents and everything else. 
So the teacher told mom how well I had, she was really surprised at how well I, I had accepted my adoption, you know. <laughs> and I guess mom wasn't too happy about oh, that. Oh, no, she wasn't. <laughs> yeah. oh, don't you ever tell her that. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was very independent. I didn't want anybody, because, you know, being the youngest and watching all of you guys uh, all over the place. I, uh, I, I, I know she did tell me afterwards I, I wanted to walk to school all by myself, which was a distance. Yes. It was, it was a good well, four or five blocks, I would say. Uh-huh. So she let me walk by herself, myself, but she'd hide in bushes all along the way. Or doorways. Yeah. Or doorways watching me. So I thought I walked by myself, but she'd actually follow yeah. me there. Yeah. Uh, we had yeah. good times. We moved out to the Rockaways, I should say, from the Bronx. Because they thought it'd be a better place to grow up. Yeah. Well yeah. For, first we moved to Manhattan for another super's job. And both parents hated that place. Yeah. That was when George decided he wasn't going back to high school and he cut high school. Yeah. Uh, Jean stepped on a needle, ended up on crutches, but by the way, yeah. you handled very well. You could swing up and down steps. I was four years old. I stepped on a uh, sewing needle and uh -huh. it broke off and went into my foot. The vein and kept moving. And kept moving, so I had to have major surgery done on my leg, but they they didn't put me under because they had a track where the needle was going. I still remember this actually. I laid on my stomach and they did the surgery, but Daddy was right in front of me the whole time uh, while they did it, you know, to try to get the needle back out yeah. my foot, and that's why I ended up on crutches for a month. Yeah. And you had scarlet fever at that time. No, I had scarlet fever when I was right after Jennifer was born. Jennifer yeah. was an infant in a carriage, yeah. you know, in a pram. And that was, they had like a, a lot of people were getting scarlet fever in those days. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was a month in isolation, you know. And our grandfather, and you have to be mindful that our Daddy Edie was, um, I was the first girl on that side of the family in generations. So he bought the fur coats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a picture of you in that white fur coat? That white fur coat that I sat on the curb. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they, you know, and he would come to the door with a bag of fruit, mm -hmm. you know, and I would get maybe one piece of fruit and they shared the rest with yep. the ward on the other side of the glass window that I could see into. Yep. Now talk about being... So he gave away all your fruit. You'd come there with a bag of fruit, you'd get a piece and he'd be sharing the they, they, Yeah, else. because I yeah. could only eat one piece. Well, it was all in the early 40s. This is bad times. In no, it was yeah. 46... 40, it was after the war. Yeah, but even so. It's what not like your... everything became great after the war. Fondness. No memory of Scotland? What is your fondest memory of Scotland? Just if the whole family getting together in the kitchen mm -hmm. and they would all sit around. You, you, you had to do your piece. You had to sing or uh, say a poem. They were a very literate family. Mm -hmm. uh, poetry, they were uh, very well read. Yeah. Very. I mean, that was a time there was no TV, so you listened to the radio, or you read books. Mm -hmm. Our parents read books, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we always had discussions around the kitchen table. Yeah. But when the family came over, everybody sat around in the kitchen, and you had to do your piece. You entertained each other. You know, you sang a song. Mm -hmm. Or you said a poem, or you told a story, whatever it was. And, and those are really... Well, I think that's where the closeness comes from. Yeah. You know, when, as a family. So, we were mid-50s, I guess. I'm in kindergarten, getting older. We uh -huh. were, in, we're in living in the Rockaways, which I think they loved the Rockaways. They did. They did. Yeah. 
Because they would walk on the boardwalk. They could walk down there at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's before everybody got mugged. <laughs> but, you know, you did, we were three blocks from the ocean, three blocks from the bay, and uh, we lived in a couple of houses, but the last, the one we really lived in was that old Victorian. Yeah. We, we had a great apartment on the second floor, and it was like six rooms. And What was the address there, do you remember? 2952 Far Rockaway Boulevard. Have you looked it up on Google? It, uh, it burned down. The house burned down while we were in it. And it, um, it, a uh, health center is over it. It was built over that spot. So, so you've been back. Yeah, I've seen that. But the, uh, it was a great, great old house. So Isabel and I and Jen shared a bedroom. And that room was so big, mm -hmm. it had two double beds, two closets, four windows, an escape door out into the hallway, <laughs> <laughs> and you could probably dance in the middle of the room. It was, yeah, it was so big, a couple of bureaus, um, and it was and uh, a desk and a phonograph. Yeah, yeah it was a, a great room, a phonograph. Yeah, so Isabel, uh, being the oldest, she had her own double bed, and Jen and I shared a bed till, well, I, as they all got married, I, I kept gaining a room, uh -huh. you know. So.